Today, we're gonna to talk about some simple translucency settings using the post-process volume in Unreal Engine 5. I have this scene here that I rendered out multiple times to do quick little render tests to see which would give me the best results between lumen, ray tracing, and path tracing. Long story short, Path tracing took the longest, but it looks the best. Ray tracing took the second longest, and if we add more samples, it looks still pretty good, still a little noisy, and there's some things we need to clean up. And Lumen is the worst, but also it still looks really good. It's just doing some video gamey things to make it run in real time and render faster. So. Let's talk about the translucency. We have this same scene that you were looking at. We have this mirror ball and we have this transparent ball right here. We're gonna focus on this today. And if I scroll up to my post-process volume right here, I have my translucency settings. Now by default, it's gonna be set to raster. And raster is basically the video game version of like, let's try and make translucency as best as we can. And it still looks really good a lot of the time. And if you're using things like Niagara, you should keep it at raster but if you don't have anything super crazy in your scene bumping it over to ray tracing can really change the look and make things look a little bit more realistic now when we select ray tracing we should also select all of these ray traced options down here now the max roughness will basically say where should we render translucency based on the roughness of the material the default is 0.6 the higher we bring this the more expensive and the more render power it's going to take but i personally have not noticed it take a huge hit especially for rendering out cinematic stuff from unreal so i will keep my max roughness to one the second is our max refraction rays and samples per pixel so if i set the max refraction rays to zero it's going to turn black like so, or actually it's just gonna disappear. If I set this to one, it's gonna look mostly black. If I set it to two, we're gonna start getting some light to start bouncing and going through our translucent object. The reason why the default is actually three is because this is what gives us translucency for a single, a single layer of translucent material. So, in general, three is a good starting point. I have bumped it up to eight for more complex things where I need to like look through multiple layers. Let's say you have like eight planes of glass that you needed to look through at the same time for some weird reason, then you would adjust your max refraction rays. But it's also worth noting as we adjust some of these properties, it might affect our frame rate. If I set this to like 50, what's gonna happen? Oh, it's not actually doing that much, so that's okay. We'll just set this back to eight for now because it looks pretty good. Now, under the translucency settings, we also have samples per pixel, and this is basically gonna help clean up any noise inside our translucent material. So if there's any grain that we can see, we can just increase this number to like 32, 64, 128, etc., etc., and it should clean up that noise. Fortunately for this scene, there's not a whole lot of translucent noise that we are dealing with, but if you had multiple planes of glass looking through each other, you might experience that. And then the last thing in the translucency options of the post-process volume is refraction. Now, the confusing part about refraction within materials in Unreal is that this is controlled on a global level in the post-process volume, but we can also adjust the refraction in the material itself. So if I turn this off, we can see that we're just looking straight through this translucent orb and it looks pretty normal, but refraction is basically creating that distortion whenever you look through a glass ball. Now, if I select this object and I go to my material by scrolling up finding the material double clicking on it and pulling up the parameters of this material right now the refraction is set to 1.1 if I bring this value up let's just bring it over here for now we can see that after we change the refraction value we're getting a much more distorted look versus if I bring it down to a negative value or below one it's changing the look completely but if we go to that post-process volume and turn off our refraction it's going to disable that so it really just depends on the look that you're going for. And sometimes you might need to go into the material and adjust the refraction manually. So I'm gonna set this back to the default value. If I set this to one, for example, it's gonna basically turn off the refraction for this material. One pro tip among a lot of Unreal artists is that you should not always have to spend all the time creating all of your glass materials manually. There's tons of assets on the Unreal Marketplace. I picked up this asset pack on the Unreal Marketplace to create my 
glass shaders because let's be real, while I can spend some time making some glass shaders, this is incredibly complex and using assets is perfectly fine. So. With translucency and the post-process volume, you can adjust it globally in the settings here for doing things with like Niagara or a lot of stuff in your scene. Sometimes raster is perfectly fine, but if you need to get really fine-tuned with ray tracing, then you can dive into those settings and you can adjust all of your samples, your bounces and stuff in the post-process volume. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down for that, down there for that as well. And I will leave you with the final tip, and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you'll make some. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.